Welcome back. It is now July 4th and I'm out here by Barron's in some irrigated barley. We've basically been raining in here for 24 hours. So we've had another half to three quarters of an inch of rain and the mosquito population is certainly getting uh, very, very active here now. We do have quite a bit of leaf diseases going on in here. There is lots of blotch and scald really starting on these leaves here. The canopy's pretty much been wet in here for, you know, two weeks now. Even in the middle of the afternoon you walk through here, you pretty much have to have gumboots on. So that is definitely prime time for disease. So keep an eye on fields like this. Uh, even as wet as it is today, these ditches are just absolutely getting loaded with tiny little nymph grasshoppers. These little guys here in particular are about a quarter of an inch long or so. So they're still pretty small, but there is just absolute piles of them flushing out of these ditches into this barley here. So definitely good time. Hit them with Corrigin. I really like that high rate, that 60 acre rate. If you're just doing the headlands, 60 acre rate, these hoppers aren't gonna fly over that barrier yet. They gotta feed their way into the field, so you'll be getting them for weeks. Well, the mosquitoes are definitely getting hungry this week. As soon as you pull up to a field, I haven't even opened the window or the door yet, and there's just a cloud of them here waiting for me to get out of the truck. There's lots of flowering canola this week. You can see behind me, this is uh, Winfield United CP21T3P, which is a true flex canola. And it is just coming into first bloom. So we're still a few days away from fungicide timing in here. We should be sweeping it for insects, but I mean, it's the canopy is absolutely soaking wet and it's only 12 degrees. So it's really not worth sweeping for insects today. I'll come back tomorrow. Hopefully we should be warmer tomorrow. Maybe the canopy will be a little bit drier. Not much point sweeping for bugs when it's below 15 degrees. Oh, the good moisture conditions, a lot of this dryland barley is looking really good. You can see this guy has tillered out pretty good. So we've basically got one main stem that is in head emergence, two tillers that are in flag leaf. But now we also have a proliferation of smaller tillers down at the bottom, including this little guy down here, which is only at about three leaf. So if he heads out, he's going to be pretty late. And this guy here looks like he's just in flag emergence. And this guy here is not quite there. I'd say penultimate leaf stage. So there's definitely going to be some staging issues at harvest time with some of these guys. There's going to be some green heads in the field pretty late. I think we'll see a lot of swathers in the field this year. This canola field actually has quite a bit of deer damage you can see here. And uh, there's actually quite a wide swath of it here in this spot because this is close to that stand of trees over there, which is an old yard site that's not active anymore. And there's a group of white-tailed deer that just love to hang out in there and they wander out and feed on the canola. Here's an instance of corn yellow top starting to show up in the field. So we see this pretty much every year when we've had a period of cool cloudy weather followed by the sun coming out. The corn basically just grows so fast you see all these little wrinkles in the leaf here so it's not nice and smooth like how it should be. And basically the chlorophyll production cannot keep up to the leaf growth so the leaves take on a yellow appearance. After a few days of sunny weather it typically disappears. Fungicide timing this year will really not be an exact science. This field looks like it's in early bloom, not too bad, but really when you get down and you look into it, a lot of these earlier to flower plants are a 10 to 15% flower, but mixed in with them, a good 50% of the crop is still just bolting or budding. So really it's, you know, trying to hit an average staging is gonna be somewhat difficult, but on this field, I would say, you know, anytime in the next, uh, you know, three days to a week, you're gonna be in that window of getting the majority of the plants in the 10 to 30% bloom stage. Here's some good examples of some of the problems we're seeing with kochia right now. This true flex around a pretty canola was sprayed with 660 mils of glyphosate back on June 22nd. And you can see by the kochia here, we have some pretty large healthy survivors surrounded by dead corpses. So definitely, you know, roughly 50% of the kochia that was here in this field at that time was pretty much glyphosate resistant. We have now selected for glyphosate resistance in this kochia. So in the future, we just cannot rely upon glyphosate alone for control of kochia in Roundup Ready Canola anymore. We really start to need, need to think about using stack traits or Liberty Link in areas and fields where we have heavy kochia pressure. This nice looking dry land field of canola is CP21T3P and this was seeded late going in just before the rain. So it actually ended up getting pretty decent even emergence. So the staging is pretty good. Most of it is just barely starting to bolt. It could still stand to cabbage out a little bit better, but uh, it's looking pretty good as is for a dry land field. 
Well, here's an interesting canola field. This is one of those ones you've heard about that's had to be sprayed multiple times for flea beetles. And now you can see just how much damage they're continuing to do. This field was sprayed with silencer last week, still has a flea beetle problem. So we're gonna be coming in here with pounce, but they've been feeding on that stem and that developing basically growing point so much that this plant is now very, very stunted, trying to flower and it's only, you know, six inches tall and that's, quite common in this field in this patch here especially there was a canola field right across the road which is like the ditches right there and very heavy flea beetle pressure from last year is now coming over into this area this corn by Lethbridge is doing great now although now it is July 6th this corn is taller than my knee which is taller than the average knee so I say it is safe to assume we were taller than knee high by the 4th of July so we're uh, pretty good at pretty much at a good benchmark there but uh, we really need some heat units we really got to get this corn going we're really starting to fall behind on heat units in this area now compared to the average year we need some sun Here's an interesting looking barley field from a distance that it almost looks like it's been swathed in windrowed, but uh, I'm not quite sure what we're seeing here. This field had some really interesting things happen at seeding time this spring. It was, it was worked quite well into a fairly fine powder. Seed drill had problems with depth control and in some spots the seed was down to four and a half inches deep. And now you see like a really interesting effect where we have some beautiful barley here and some stunted barley here and the heads here are not looking all that great as they emerge and i'm not sure exactly why whether that goes back to the seeding issue or not it shouldn't be a chemical carryover issue because this was just liberty link canola last year so there wouldn't have been anything sprayed in here that would affect barley this year so this might potentially go back to that seed being extremely deep the barley was very yellow and very stressed when it emerged and that stunting might be carrying through now. Here's a drone shot from 400 foot altitude showing that repeating pattern going across the field and it looks to be somewhere in the 60 to 80 foot wide space. I can't definitively measure because I forgot to pay for a drone deploy this year. But you can quite distinctively see from the air that it is indeed caused by the seed drill and could not have been possibly done by a 120 foot boom sprayer with that kind of repeatability. So what I'm thinking it likely is, is that stressed out barley, some of those strips were at a vulnerable time of development. Back on May 22nd, we had a frost of minus four degrees overnight, and that is likely what caused that damage to the head. That's usually fairly distinctive damage to the heads from frost, where you get the white dead florets and a little bit of twisting. Uh, here's the oats that got seeded in the rye stubble last week. They are just starting to emerge. These guys probably just came up either this morning or yesterday at some point. So we're still pretty young here, but coming up nice and thick, looking really good. But that's about what you'd expect when the soil is this moist and good and warm. Here's a good visual example of approximately what we'll want to see at fungicide timing. Now this field did get sprayed a day or two ago here, so it is now sitting at about 30-ish percent bloom. So we still have lots of unopened flowers on the top, and there's just a minimum of pods down below. In a perfect world, you'd get them all before there's any pods formed. You want to coat as many of those flower petals as possible to prevent sclerotinia infection, starting in those leaf axles when those flowers fall down and get stuck in that can canopy there. Here by Nobleford is a little trial done by Corteva. So this is trialing out a new product that's as of yet unnamed. It's a group 6 and 27, it's supposed to be just dynamite on kochia. So between these white flags here is an untreated check. You can kind of see this, this uh, kind of thistle is uh, a little yellow and sick. This one here looks perfectly fine. There is a fair bit of kochia in the canopy here. So that is the unsprayed portion. Overall, the field is pretty clean of kochia, but there is the odd little patch here and there, like this one here, where you can see there's a whole pile of dead ones around here. And these guys are probably newly emerged since being applied. So I'll have to find out exactly when this was applied to know for sure. There's a bit of a sprayer miss right here in the corner, which shows you just how heavy the kochia pressure was. So I'm definitely inclined to think that those kochia that I see have emerged since being applied. Well, there is now definitely a big thunderstorm system coming up from the south, so it'll be interesting to see what develops. We're uh, still forecasted for 
very severe thunderstorms and large hail apparently. Well, the grasshopper population down here by McGrath is still just absolutely exploding. There's quite a few in the canopy today. They're uh, warming themselves up here this morning. Piles down below jumping around. Lots of leaf feeding going on. And uh, quite a few in the heads are actually molting. So we have all these empty skins here as these guys are getting bigger. Once they get uh, a couple stages bigger than this, they're going to start flying around everywhere and they'll be a lot harder to control. Yellow peas down here to the south are looking absolutely beautiful. They're in full flower and just going to town. So some spots here now are waist high on me. So once you get way down in the canopy down here, you can see there is a little bit of disease starting to develop. A little bit of, uh, of anthracnose microsporelia kind of starting here and there. And it's no wonder. I mean, the, it's very humid and damp in here and it hasn't rained since Sunday. And there is also the odd canola plant here and there. You can see a few yellow flowers. But it's not enough to be, you know, yield damaging as a weed or anything like that. So it's just kind of a, a little bit of a cosmetic blemish on the field. But it'll be easy enough to clean it out. Well, here's a really interesting looking bug on this uh, lamb's quarters here. Off the top of my head, I'd have to say this is probably some type of cicada. But I'm not 100% sure. So if you know exactly what that is, let me know in the comments. But by the time you do, I probably will have figured it out. And that'll be it for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.